Okie doke. So what we're going to be tying here is Lefty's Deceiver. It's going to come out looking something like this. You can do this in a bunch of colors, uh, add the different kinds of flash or whatever uh, that you want into it. Uh, different ways to do your throat or hotspot. Oh, mine all shifted to one side on that one. Anyhow, uh, yeah, maybe I just twisted the whole thing. There we go. So, anyhow, that's what we're going to be doing. What I got in the vise is a Gamakatsu uh, B10S size 1 aught. Uh, you can use a wide range of sizes here as far as streamers are concerned. I, I'd say uh, size 2 all the way up to, you know, if you really wanted to, like a 5 aught. <clears throat> so you can make them pretty big. Uh, thread I'm going to be using is GSP100. Um, you could absolutely go 150 if you're more comfortable with that. I think 100 is pretty good for streamers of this size. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to kind of get started here. So all I want to do is just start my thread. And you don't need to get it crazy here, but give yourself a couple bodkin spaces um, behind the eye of the hook so that, uh, that we can finish ahead a little more easily. Uh, and we just kind of open wrap those turns going back. And trim off the tag. And then depending on the hook you get, uh, you got to watch out for your bend. So on these gamakatsus, I'll come maybe just past the hook point. But if I go, you can see if I go too much further past that, it starts to slope down. And when we add our tail and everything, it's going to want to, if, if you put it too far in the back, it's going to make it slope down. So just kind of kind of keep mindful of where you're going to place that. Once you've got your thread where you want it, we're just going to, or the easy way to do it here, just to kind of help with the tail, is put a few extra wraps in here to kind of like build up a little bump right there. Okay, uh, and that's going to help us kind of seat the tail. Uh, next, you need some saddle hackle. Um, what I've got here is just some white saddle hackle. Uh, you can get it off a uh, actual saddle or you can get it strung, uh, whichever way. And I just kind of, I like this method that I found. Uh, but you just kind of clump them together. Uh, they don't need to be perfect or anything. Actually, the way I pinched that, they came out pretty nice. <laughs> it wasn't by design. Uh, so anyway, you can just kind of get them all together. Kind of like so. I do like my outside ones where the stem is facing in, though. Let me switch that up. And you don't need to get them... Uh, actually, I think it's better if you don't get them perfectly the same length. So give them a little bit of a taper uh, towards the back so when they're in the water... They don't have to be crazy, So, but when they're in the water, kind of, I think it kind of helps the swimming action. So once you have that, uh, what we're looking to do here is at least twice the distance of the hook shank. So there's one, there's two, so I'm just over two. Uh, about, I'm probably about a quarter inch over two. Two links of the hook shank. And some people trim that stuff off first. I just go ahead and tie it, tie it on. And then I can kind of play with it a little bit on that bunch. What you want to do is just kind of make sure that it goes around the top part of that hook shank. And I'll tighten that down a few times. And with the GSP, you can go really, you can really pull tight. Uh, so I like doing that. You could also use some uh, 140, I guess, if you wanted to, or 210 denier, or something like that. But you do want it a little bit heftier thread. I wouldn't be trying to do this with a, uh, you know, like a 70 or um, 8 odd or something like that. So once I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie this down, or finish tying that little bundle in. And wrap back up, and there's my basic tail. And so if it starts to kind of get all wonky on you in the back, you don't really have to worry about that too much, just because once it actually gets wet, it's going to all want to come together and, um, and swim that way. So you don't have to worry about, worry about that too much. It's not a super big deal. Uh, next what I'm going to do is add some crystal flash. You can add different kinds of flashes here. Uh, I like doing the crystal flash. I'm going to use uh, this UV pearl and uh, silver. And so what I've got here is I've pulled four strands. These are full strands out of the package. They come out to whatever it is, 14 inches or something. Uh, 
13, eh, about 14 inches. And so uh, I've put up, I've just kind of put them all together and I want to, uh, and I've evened out the tips at the bottom, if you can see that there, or uh, pretty close. And so what I'll do is I'll find the middle and I'll pinch the middle like so. You can see that they're, what you want to do is basically just have them somewhat even at the bottom on both sides. And so that's pretty good. A little taper on each, on each side is pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll, let me get in front there. I'll take it, I'll put, uh, wrap my left hand around it and I'll pinch down so it forms kind of a, a loop like that. And you can actually split these apart in your hand. Oh, I did that a little slower than I normally do. Just so you keep the bundles separate because we're going to use uh, one on one, one bundle on one side and one bundle on the other. And now I can easily take one bundle and set it aside. And next what I want to do is I want to get my crystal fa flash lined up so that it is, uh, now you can't quite see that in the camera, but it's going to be, I like to run mine just past where the, uh, uh, the feathers end. Uh, maybe by a quarter of an inch or so. I just I just kind of like that flash kicking out the back just a little bit for that's just a preferable uh, a personal preference thing. So I'm gonna find that distance. I'll I'll pinch it with my finger to make sure I have the distance that I want. Okay, and I'm gonna start on the far side first. I'm gonna put one loose wrap over. And on my second wrap, I'm going to kind of tighten that down. So if I turn my fly over, you can kind of see that it's sitting uh, neatly but somewhat spread out along those feathers. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Even that up a little bit. And one thing, one way you can do this is by actually just taking the material after you've marked it with your finger, sliding it underneath the thread. I'll do it again so you can see that. So I'll bring it on the back side. Oop. My pieces of flash is all folding on me, all funky. So I'll bring it up on the back side. So I've got the thread. I've got my distance. I can slide the thread back and forth. I'll slide it down to where my distance is or where I want it to be. I'll put that along the side of the hook shank. And I'll put a couple more wraps in. And I'm going to do just even a couple more just to make sure it's nice and tight. You can use, if you want it to, uh, your flash to be a little more distributed, you can take your thumb and kind of do one of these numbers if you want to. Uh, that's really up to you. Um, so there you go. Now, what did I do with it? Oh, next what I'm going to do is add some flashaboo to the back. So I've just got some, uh, you know, it's hard to see, but it's just uh, regular old UV flash uh, flashaboo. And I'm just going to pull some off. Well, I pulled way too much off there. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on. There we go. Uh, three or four strands is usually pretty good. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to find the middle, just like I did before. Oh, kind of like so. So I'm about there. And next I'm going to, I'm going to re kind of repeat that process, except I'm just going to leave it all in one piece. I'm not going to cut these. Now they're all folding into my thumb. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to lift it up, place it on the side of the hook. I'm just going to put one wrap in. It doesn't even have to be tight, it can be loose. Actually, it's probably better if it is loose on the first one. Then I'm just going to take the others, I'm going to fold it over to the top, down to the other side, so that it's laying uh, about where the other flash is. And now I'll tighten that up and I still want all these guys out front we're going to use that to wrap the body here in just a second 
So now I've got my flashaboo and my, all of my uh, crystal flash coming out the back there, uh, making for a pretty good looking fly. So, or a good tail anyway. Next, I'm going to gather all of these uh, pieces of crystal flash that I left up front. I'm going to gather them into a bunch. I'm going to fold them to the back. I'm just going to place a couple of wraps in. And now I'm going to wrap back forward. And you can do other stuff here too. You don't have to use this uh, crystal flash to build like a body. Matter of fact, you don't even have to actually have to build an underbody on this fly. Uh, if you want to, you can use dubbing. Uh, you could um, use uh, uh, like pearl uh, braided uh, pearl braid or something like that. Uh, so choices, you know, kind of up to you there and what you'd like to do. So we got to leave room for some bucktail up front here. Uh, and a throat and a head. So I like to be, uh, you know, right about a quarter inch or a little over a quarter inch from the eye to the back. So yeah, I'm right. I'm right at that quarter inch spot, pretty close. Uh, I need even take one off. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that clump of crystal flash. I'm going to start. I'm just going to gather it together, kind of put it into a flat uh, or flatten it out. And I'm just going to start wrapping forward. Now you're going to get this little lump back here, and don't don't worry about that. This is actually going to be all covered up, uh, so it doesn't. I mean, this this part is actually it's really not necessarily kind of like I said before. Um, but it's a good way to use up that extra flash. And uh, for some reason, if the bucktail becomes exposed, then you've still got something shiny in there. Uh, and and it's a peace of mind thing too, I suppose. That hey, that's covered. It's not bare hook shank. Some people care about that more than others. All right, now that we've done that, I can take it, just cut that off. Uh, and then what I like to do is I'm gonna put a couple more wraps in here just to make sure it's all nice and tight. And I'm gonna take my crazy glue with the brush applicator and just do a quick dab on there. Uh, and we're gonna call that good. So what we need next is um, bucktail, and the first bucktail that I like to get is the white. Uh, if you're do if you're running multiple colors, um, I, this is a preference thing again. But I like my bucktail that's up here to match the buck uh, the uh, saddle hackle that's in the back. So uh, so that's what we're gonna do here, and we don't got We don't have to have a lot of saddle hackle e or I'm sorry uh, bucktail either. So there's not not really any rhyme or reason here on how much I necessarily grab. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to kill it with it. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to have an, way too much. So I'm just gonna get that bucktail and just kind of twist it in my fingers and lay it up on there, kind of get a feel for how big, uh, how much of a profile that buck bucktail is gonna. I can't talk. How much of a profile that bucktail is going to make? on the fly. And so that's that's pretty good. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can tie one batch in on one side and one on the other, or you can kind of uh, just tie it all together and splay it across the top. Okay, so if you, if you do it the latter, if you're gonna tie it all in and just splay it across the top, you wanna add uh, the same amount that you would if you're gonna add uh, just a little on this side and a little on that side. So either way you want it to be even. Uh, to make it consistent, if you're gonna tie numerous ones of these, uh, again, take your. What I do is I'll take my bucktail, I'll twist it, and I'll I'll use the bottom of my hook shank as a gauge, so I can just kind of get an eyeball as to how how much space is taken up between the bottom of the shank and the hook point. So I'm going to add just a little bit more there. And actually, I'm going to come down here and get this clump. It's a little easier to get to. So I've got a new new little clump there. And we don't want to go too crazy here either, because uh, we are going to add some more in just a minute. And I'm not liking any of those options. So there we go. This is what I want here. OK. Uh, next, all we need to do is kind of clean this out a little bit. If you've got some strays, um, that's fine. That's not a big deal, unless they're really wonky. Maybe get rid of those. 
so other than that, what I'll do is with the bucktail here is I'll I'll pinch it kind of in the middle, and I'll run my whoop, I'll run my fingers through it, and you'll see this stuff to uh, start popping out. And I'm going to take those and pull them. Uh, those are typically short pieces of buck hair or bucktail, and I'll kind of pluck away or strip it out. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to lay it all together in one clump, clump and then splay it out a little bit. Uh, next, you got to figure out how long you want it. Um, I like to have mine going about uh, about three quarter or just over half of the way from the tie-in point back here. Okay, so that's that's kind of where I like mine. Then once you have that you need we need to use our uh, well I'm right-handed so I'm going to use my left thumb left index to get right to where my thread is because this is my tie-in point here and I can kind of trim that out and I trim it at a little bit of an angle and just feel that it helps tie it in a little easier so I start with a few loose wraps and then work my way into some heftier wraps moving forward. Uh, the tighter you make the wraps in the back, the more, uh, the more this is going to explode, like the, the bucktail is going to explode and come out. And so now I'm going to take my thumb and kind of work that bucktail right where I want it. And I'm just going to keep working this thing forward and tie it in. Now, I'm a little further uh, back than I probably normally would be. Usually I tie this in a little uh, closer up, but anyhow, so that's that. Whoop, so we get an underneath shot. You can also take this bucktail and move it all the way around if you want. Uh, that's up to you. You can actually have this thing going all the way around and completely encompassing the hook shank um, if you want to. So now that I've got that on there, what I want to do is I want to glue all that in. Uh, on these things I like glue, that bucktail likes to slip on me. Tying them, so I add a generous amount of glue. And we can kind of let that set up. And I'll wrap forward and back. And you'll see that some of these things just come out, keep coming out. If they keep coming out like that, you know, don't hesitate to move this and just add a little bit more, which I think I want to do, just because there was a lot that came out there. And it happens. So I'll, I'll go ahead and add just a little more right here. And kind of splay it out and around. Remember, as you go forward, use your tighter wraps. All right, that's a little better. And we'll trim it off right there. You really want to get this all tied, tied in and tied down well. Like so. Normally, I actually swing that bucktail all the way around like I did on this one here. I, I just like that better for whatever reason. Uh, but I think this is more of the traditional way. So I want to tie the more traditional way. Uh, so I'm going to glue that again. Just because it's a streamer, it's going to get hit hard. And I like to make sure I've got my glue. All right. <clears throat> Next, we're going to add uh, a collar. Uh, so there's several ways you could do it here. You could use red tinsel, uh, pull a strand off of this, fold it in half, cut it, do it again several times, just like we did with the crystal flash, uh, and use something like this for uh, like a hot spot collar. You could use uh, you could do the same thing with like some uh, uni floss, or uh, you could use dubbing or. Uh, whatever you want. I guess you don't even really have to do it, although I think it really sets the fly off when you do. So we're going to stick with that. So what I'm doing is uh, 
uh, flashaboo dubbing. I really like this stuff. This stuff is pretty neat. It's basically grandma's Christ, uh, Christmas tinsel. And you don't need a lot of this. Uh, or you know what you could do? You could also use just some like red or copper crystal flash, something like that if you wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I just pinch a little off. And I'm just going to slide it underneath like so. I want to make sure that I'm getting right in the middle down there. I'll just put a couple wraps over. And I'm, I'm advancing my thread forward just ever so slightly when I do that. Now I can just take this, pinch it, and fold it back. As I get stuck with the hook point. And I'll come in and tie or uh, tie in or lock down I should say sorry lock down that throat and my throat goes underweight uh, that underbelly uh, that's just the way I do it you can tie them short long you know whatever whatever suits you not a whole lot, a lot of right and wrong here but that's why I said it's not really super important if this is uh, covered underneath there uh, or if you've tied it too long and you don't like the length, you can always trim it. You know, if you're fishing this thing and you're saying, hey, that I don't like the way that's acting in the water, then just take your scissors out the riverside and cut that off a little bit. No big deal. Okay. Next, I'm going to get my top color. I'm just going to use some chartreuse here. Uh, and I want my chartreuse to run uh, about halfway into my bucktail. Uh, or maybe just a, maybe three quarter, but somewhere right in here is the length that I want that. And we don't want to add a whole lot of bucktail here, just enough to give it a little pop on top. And, and again, there's not really a rhyme or reason as to how much I'm getting here. You d you do want to stay a little more on the sparse side, just because. Uh, when you're wrapping a whole lot of bucktail in right up here at the tip, uh, it can build up on your, you know, it can build up on you pretty quick. So something like that. That's pretty good. And again, loose wrap over, loose wrap over, and when you come on that third one, you can pull down, but you want to be on the front side so that your front side splays, and your back side shouldn't splay quite so much. And I'll work my. I need to undo that just to fuzz. There we go. And you want to check it to make sure you've got some even distribution. So that way, when you pull it tight on both sides, does it come back and. You know, line up on both sides. And this one lines up pretty well. Maybe just to the camera side, just a little bit. Uh, now we're going to come in and start to trim all this out. Now you can trim this stuff beforehand too, which sometimes can be easier. And you can be a little over that eye, too. These don't have to be perfect. They're going to get attacked aggressively, and the nose on these things doesn't need to be perfect. Not like some other flies where you really want to have like a clean nose. But you do want to keep that eye open as much as possible so we have a solid finishing point. So, if I can get, I just can't get the angle on it, not the way I'm wanting. One of these days I'll get that done, that'll work. Now I can come in and start putting some wraps in. And actually, what I'm going to do first, just because that is covering a little more, I'm going to take my 
uh, tweezers and I'm just going to kind of shove it all back a little bit. And I can jump to the front side. There we go. And just start wrapping that in to give myself a small little nose here. And if a little sticks out the front, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. There we go. Now I'm going to come in with my whip finish. And you don't have to go crazy on this. Uh, I'd say four or five is probably enough. When you've got this GSP too, you can really, really pull. I mean, I'm really pulling on that. Get it nice and tight. Uh, and then with all these types of streamers and stuff, I always just, I really glue pretty heavy. What I'll also do is I'll glue right up onto my bucktail just a little bit. I know some people frown on that. Uh, I don't, not on, not on this pattern anyway. Some patterns you're like, you, you really don't want to do that. But on this one, it's really not such a big deal. And there you go. That's Lefty's Deceiver. And that's, well, the way I tie it anyway. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe, share. Um, also, if you've not checked out our Facebook group, Fly Tying for Beginners, uh, feel free to do so, answer the questions, and that gets you in the door. Um, that's it. Happy tying.